So today we're using scatterplot trend lines to answer questions about a scatterplot. Okay, so here's our situation today. It says, each day a beach tracked the number of visitors it had and the average daily temperature. The results are in the scatterplot. Okay, so you'll notice we've got average daily temperature here, number of visits, and each one of these points represents a day. For example, this point represents a day that the average daily temperature was like, I don't know, like 20 degrees Fahrenheit and had about, I don't know, say 70 visitors that day. All right, so each one of these represents a day. And now we're gonna answer questions based on this data. Now, the first thing you wanna do when you have a scatter plot is you wanna draw in a trend line so you can represent it because when you have this much data, it's hard to use it so we need to kind of average it out, I guess you could say, okay? So before I draw my trend line, I always like to put an outline around the data because it makes it a little easier to figure out where my trend line's gonna be, okay? So there's the outline of my data, and my trend line, I like it to go through sort of the middle of the blob, I guess you can say. And I want it to be so that about half the data is above, half's below, it's not too bad there. I guess we can go here. It doesn't necessarily have to go through zero. Keep that in mind. You mainly want the line to go through the middle of this blob. That's not too bad right here. Maybe we could go down a little bit. How about here? We'll say this is pretty good. Okay. So it kind of goes through the middle of the blob. About half the points are below it. About half the points are above it. It's kind of the average of all the data points. Okay. Now, the reason why this is helpful is, now when we answer our questions about our data, we can ignore all of the little points, all the dots, and we can just focus on the trend line, which makes our job a lot easier, okay? So, first question. About how many visitors can the beach expect when it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside? Okay, so on my graph, here is 70 degrees Fahrenheit right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go up from 70 degrees all the way until I hit my trend line right there. And then I'm gonna go over, and I'm gonna have to estimate this the best I can. All right, so this is 200, that's 225. We could say that's, I don't know, 210 maybe? Maybe a little less than 210, we'll say about 210. So we could say about 210 visitors, okay? So notice what we did. We just went from 70 and when we went up until we hit the trend line. Now, don't get thrown off by the points, the data points from our scatter plot. There are two different points that are, that match up with that 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But we're not using the data points, we're using the trend line. Because remember, that trend line represents the average of all the data points, okay? And that's the one we're gonna use to get our answer. All right, second question about what temperature is it when the beach has 150 visitors. Okay, so this time it's the opposite. This time it gives you the number of visitors. So I have to find 150 visitors, that's right here. And again, I'm gonna go over until I hit the trend line. And then once I hit that trend line, I'm gonna go straight to the other axis and that'll tell me the temperature. So notice it doesn't quite hit 50, it's a little below 50. Let's say that's like eh, 48. And remember, the best we could do here is really estimate because we don't know the exact numbers. We kind of have to use it based, estimate it based on the scale we have. So about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, notice 150 does go through one of our data points from our scatter plot, but we're not basing our answer off the data points. We're basing it off that trend line, that average of all our data. Okay? So that's what we're going to do when we're estimating answers using the trend line. So find the value they give you, go up until you hit the trend line, and then go over to figure out the answer, okay? So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe, because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.